Good morning, folks. This is Todd Coburn of Cal Poly Pomona with Lecture 24 of Arrow 4080, Finite Elements. Today we're going to be investigating using NASTRAN to model gaps in our structures. Gaps are places where the structure can deflect some amount but not without, uh, without limits. And this will introduce an element which will allow us to model those so our structure will represent that kind of condition. Let's see how it works. So in order to use a gap element, we're going to find that actually this is another baby step forward relative to what we've already covered. In fact, Here is a little excerpt from a Nastran deck which shows the basic things that we need to add. We're going to need for a gap element to be uh, to act as a gap, we're going to need to be using a nonlinear solution like solution 106. We're going to need loading cards. I have the temperature card shown here, but really any loading could be used, a forces or pressures or temperatures or whatever. Okay, the gap is independent of those. Obviously, if we don't have a loaded structure, there's no reason to even model the thing and put in a gap. Since we're running a nonlinear solution, you're going to see that we're going to have all the same cards that we use for nonlinear solutions, like the 106 card, the NL Parm card, which identifies the idea of the NL Parm parameter later, the NL parameter down on the bulk data, which tells how many iterations it's going to do, a large displacement parameter card. And then we're going to see an additional card called the gap element, or the C gap. C for connectivity, G for uh, gap for gap. It's a connectivity card that identifies a gap. And the properties for that gap will be the P gap card. We'll look at what some of these terms are and what those elements do in a moment. I've also got the temperature shown red, but really that's not required for a nonlinear gap analysis. What's required is any kind of loading, and could be thermal, could be forces, whatever, and these gap elements. Let's take a look at some of the details that Na the NASTRAN manual provides for modeling these. Here again is our deck, and here is the C gap card. I have bracketed in in red what's required for us. We're going to be calling out the C gap card. We're going to give it an element ID. This is just like, it doesn't tie back to the case control because it's just like any other element. It's a connectivity card. So just like we use C rods or P -be C beams or whatever, this is a C gap. It calls out an element connectivity between two nodes. Okay, so it's got an ID. And then we're going to call out what property, what gap properties are going to be with the PID card in field three. We're then going to attach two nodes. We're going to put one of them in GA and one of them in GB in fields 4 and 5. And then, just like we did with beam elements and C bar elements, we're going to create a vector that shows the direction. Now, you would think that would be GA and GB, but GA and GGB just defines which two grid points are connected, and this vector determines the orientation of the gap. So, so if we want to gap aligned with the x-axis, it'd be 1, 0, 0. With the y-axis, it'd be 0, 1, 0, and so on. Okay? Those are the only parts of this card we're going to use. Pretty straightforward. Then we need the p-gap card to tell what this gap looks like and how it works. The p-gap card is going to have a property ID, which obviously needs to match the property ID coming from the c-gap card. And then we're going to put in, in this u0 field, we're going to put in an initial gap opening. So if there's a gap there, then we have to identify what's the dimension of that gap. Now you would think that's the direction, the, diff, uh, the distance between those two nodes, but it's not necessarily. Okay. And then we're going to need one other thing. We're going to need the stiffness of the gap. So, and we're going to put that in field five. So what happens is Nastran uses uh, the stiffness from field six to provide stiffness in that direction between these two joints. And then if the, as long as the joint, the gap is open or hasn't closed that initial amount, then it will use that initial gap stiffness. 
after it connects or closes, it's going to use a different stiffness. That's what we put in field 5. We really want this to be infinite, but that doesn't work. So we're just going to pick a big number. We're going to use uh, something like 1 times 10 to the 12th or something like that. That kind of number. Not too huge to cause singularity problems, but big enough to be much stiffer than any other structural elements. In gap 6, in our, excuse me, in field six, we're allowed where we are allowed to place an initial stiffness before the gap closes. We'll go ahead and just allow Nastran to use its default value, which it says here is something like uh, 10 to the minus 10 times the stiffness of the gap the, of the element of the closed gap that you put in field five. Okay, those are the only pieces of the card we're going to need. That's going to be pretty simple. We'll see in this little example up here. We have a Z gap C gap card with ID 20 which uses p-gap card 21. It attaches two nodes, 5 and 6, and it looks like it's in the, uh, in the, two dire in the y direction is the orientation of that. And then for the gap, we see the initial gap size is 06, and we have a stiffness of 1 times 10 to the 12th once that closes, and we're using the default value of some fraction of that for the open gap. Okay? We already said that, and now we're ready to look at how this all plays out. So here is a typical deck, and once again, we're going to have our model in the bulk data section. If we're doing gap analysis, we're going to use solution 106. Now, you can actually run this with 101, but then it treats the gaps as like a little spring kind of element with that initial gap kind of stiffness. So... We're going to put in solution 101. We're going to put titles and subtitles, as we've discussed before. We're going to use, now this temperature card is not required. Once again, we're going to need either temperatures or some kind of forces or something like that to load our model. What we do need if we use a gap is this NL Parm card because we're going to need to be doing a nonlinear analysis. So the solution 106, the NL Parm 10, and the NL Parm and the parameter down in the bulk data, these are all tied with a nonlinear analysis. And we're using, as you can see, the same values we did before when we looked at nonlinearity before. So there's really nothing about gaps that's different except for the gap element and property itself, which you see down here below. We see the C gap and the P gap. This particular one is looks like it's the same one we had before that we just described. And this is just letting us know that while this gap goes from node A, whatever ID is the first one, to node B, it has a direction. The stiffness is going to be in the direction that's shown here on the on the C gap card. On the P gap, that gives us the stiffness. And this happens to be doing a gap with a, a thermal analysis, but that doesn't have to be there. Okay. So those are the basic building blocks of doing gap element analysis in Nastran. This should work in your Autodesk Nastran. should also work in your MSC Nastran and NX Nastran if you guys, any of you are using that. Enjoy.